Yo, what's going on? Cameron Van Hoy here. Yo, yo, Mike Dreya. What are you doing, Mike? Move! I'm driving in the city, bro. Yeah. Yeah. People apparently think that a yield sign is a stop sign. Yeah. How you doing, man? I'm good, buddy. I'm good. I'm over here working. You know, it's been, it's the end of the year. It's the end oh. of 2022. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> hey, me. a knife through me. Yeah. The year's over. Oh, it's over. Um, and yeah. it's been a good year. Look, it's been a good year. There's a lot of good stuff that's been happening. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah. You had a good year. Yeah, yeah, I had a good year. I had a good year. Yeah, you had a good year, you know. Um, tell us what you did. You worked. You did some good work this year. Yeah, yeah, you know, I filmed some shows. We filmed some shows. I was in uh, North Carolina filming High Town. For a couple of months and then i went over to new york to film a few sh episodes of uh some tv shows and uh then i traveled to spain and uh yeah spain not, together. not to not was spain good i, I had a blast oh, spain was great by the way brooklyn bridge baby oh wow there it is and we are people we in new york Oh wow! We in New York. Listen, you want to come here yet, bro? Yeah, I, love I love New York. Back, Ellie's Ellie's played out. Yeah, I had a good year as well. I dropped the Flinch NFT, which was what an experience. But I liked it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that was an experience, wasn't it? Holy shit! Wow, that nearly that nearly killed you. Entering Web three, man. Um. But it was good. I really enjoyed that. And I have another movie that's kind of moving along. Got some really good juice behind it. How's that working out? It's good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to like yeah. get into details Are here. Just... All right. All right. All right. I mean, this is not just you and I talking. But... People are going to watch it. You know. I forget that sometimes. It, like right now, it just feels like me and you are FaceTiming on the phone. Right. Right, like right. my brain doesn't comprehend that, you know, people are going to be watching us on the internet. Yeah, That's I, can't, the I can't be talking like the specific business of like offers I'm making to actors and things like this. Yeah. 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 And, if there's no like camera crew and mics and, and managers who are annoying me, like, could you imagine if I'm like, yeah, we made an offer to this guy, this manager's dicking us around. I'm trying to, like if that was the podcast and just straight up talking about like the ins and outs it's like the financiers are like doing this and we're that and like this actor is giving us hell. You know, like can't do it. That would be bad. Yeah, I just can't do it. It's just be very yeah, bad. It's not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I do like okay, the cool. idea. But but I do like the idea of like a future world where creators, an actor like you and a filmmaker like me, are really sharing what the process is like with people. I do like that. I do yeah, like this idea. Of you know, imagine, I, I mean, think about how entertaining that is really and in, in informative and all kinds of things, right? It's like, okay, people love movies. People have loved movies for a long time. Reality television comes about and then people like to watch people's real lives. But even though it's fake, it's fake as hell, right? And it got faker and faker so because fake. they're trying to, they're trying to like kind of, you know, play ratings and all this stuff. But oh, the, okay. the notion of watching reality, but then all of a sudden you have this creator economy, you have podcasts where people of all walks of life, whether it's Joe Rogan or whoever it may be, you get to kind of really explore conversation with them and the other people that they talk to and kind of get really get into their mind and hear interesting ideas and explore new worlds that you never understood before. So imagine a world where creators, actors okay. like you, filmmakers like me, are truly talking about what they're doing, sharing it over time. And imagine like, look, you're a wonderful actor now. Imagine if in a few years from now, you become a freaking movie star, right? You land that one show that, oh, look at the, look at the chin. Look at how much he loves this combo. You land no, that no, no, one no, no, show. I, I heard you. Cause let me, I was you land, no, 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 let me finish. You land that one show. Keep just looking proud. You land that one show that just goes through the roof. Kind of like what uh, Louis did for you or Mr. Robot, right? People always recognize you from those shows. The next step is you're the lead of some great show. You become big and people look back and they're like, yo, he was documenting. He was talking about this all the time. I really enjoyed his podcast. I get a direct connection to him. And then also he's, you know, he's this part of the show or me. I make my next movie and my next movie's 
freaking massive. And everyone's no, like, yeah, keep talking about me. Go. No. Keep talking about People, me. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, sorry. We'll go back to you. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I like yeah. the idea of really being like, like a new level of transparency and connectivity with audiences via this. Yeah. Platform. It's interesting. It's interesting. To me, it's as interesting. Well, not as interesting, but it's like similar to when, uh, I mean, it's documentation, right? Like I was with a friend yesterday. He was taking photos of me. His dad's a famous, not famous, but he's a good big time photographer. I think, I think he took photos for New York times, whatever it was. And he's like, my dad always told me when I was younger, because after the photo shoot, we're walking to grab a beer. And he's like, you know, he's like taking pictures of me as I'm walking down the street. He's like videoing me without me even knowing this documenting shit. And he's just like, uh, He's like, my dad always told me, you never always take pictures and videos wherever you are in life. You never know who you're going to be documenting and who they'll end up being. And then you'll have those moments in life when they, like when they once were. Right. So, I mean, it's not the same as what you're saying, because you're no, saying that you is like, the same. Like, that's you the like exact being... same. OK, but, that's the exact but, same because you never know, yeah, because yeah. Th- right. that's the thing is, you, you, you know, you know what I mean? Like. Imagine if we had done like I regret not documenting more the process of making Tragedy Girls or the process of making Flinch and putting that on. Bro, you know, we documented put- the fuck out of um, Treasure of the Black Jaguar. Yeah, we did, but we never put it out. I mean, where's the footage? Yeah. I have all the footage. I could drop all that. I think I'm. I think I'm ready to edit that thing. Dude, that's a masterclass. <laughs> I mean, we did document the hell out of that, but like, I, you know, like I never, you know, you know, I, I had this YouTube channel. I would put up videos. They got a lot of views. I should have, when then I started making all these movies and just kind of moved away from here, but I should have been filming all of those processes and talking about it and communicating and, and engage like that, that to me is the future. That's just where the tech is now, you know, yeah. like. I, it's it's a new idea, but I think it's cool. You think documenting things is a is a new tech idea? No, it's it's not a new the tech. Brings it in a new way, right? I mean, it's now... just a new way of doing it. Look, back in the day, someone like a Francis Coppola, his wife documented the making of Apocalypse Now, right? Right, right. right. Or like yeah. that. That's even by then he was already a big director. But like you know, there is behind the scene footage of you know, Dennis Hopper and then making easy rider as an example, right. Or something else, you know, like there's, but you got to kind of scour YouTube and back then in the seventies or whatever, even in the eighties, where are you going to watch this stuff? People shot it. There was their own thing. The most it could be was like a featurette. Right. 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 On some TV show for like 20 seconds between an ad. Now with YouTube and social media. Yeah. It's just, you can, well, so I could sit here and really get into it and be like, look, I've developed the script, got the rights, got the option, got the movie financed, talk specifically about the negotiating of the deal for the financing, talk about who I'm making offers to, things like this, you know, like, and that could be really what? Well, what I feel, you know, to cut you off. And you can do the like, same with acting. It's like, hey, I got an audition God, for this thing, I'm going dang. out. What? Sorry, I forgot we were on a podcast. Um, <laughs> um, what you should do. How tall was he? He had long, long dark hair and a chin that could pick ice in a cold winter's day. Anyway, so um, dude, you should, I mean, I hear what you're saying. You like YouTube, you like podcasts. It definitely is. Oh, and just to let everyone know, I've, I've got something white strips in my mouth, so I'm talking weird. Um, but like what this made me realize what a good idea is, is you should be documenting the entire process of you putting together your next film, which is already late in the game because you're kind of almost done locking the deal down, God willing. Right. But like if you just put a camera on you through all your phone conversations. Right, just set it up and just film while you're on the phone, trying to make the deals. Literally, even you writing and workshopping the script. I mean, I know so most I did, of that. So I did record those sessions most recently. We did a lot of script work, myself and the writer, recently, just like getting and that's good. Yeah, taking it further. And I we did it via Zoom, and I recorded all of that. Oh my god! Sorry, 
if the audience doesn't know, but we also made a movie called uh, um, Shark Proof. Shark Proof. Yeah. yeah. Documenting and, that would have uh, been great. I mean, documenting when we wrote that script, like the story yeah. behind that script. Yeah, of how- yeah like – like I, I really want to start doing this. I want to do this oh. for definitely the new, my new movie. Like I want to bring people through with me and it might start off with like 10 people being interested, but who knows? Maybe then it becomes 20, 50, a hundred, a thousand. And people are like, yo, this is really like, this is such an, an interesting look at the filmmaking process that you can't get anywhere else. Has it not happened before? Like have, have people not made like, like BTS, but like not of like the actual filming, but like no. I, mean, I know people do that with documentaries. Like basically, it's happened, but they're that. not. You, they're not putting it out there via YouTube in the way that YouTube social media, I should say, is best okay. used. Which so is see, in your so you feel that it's the medium that really makes it like unique. It's the fact that you could just go on to YouTube and watch as opposed to because and absorb the context much more easily than. Yeah. Having in the past, we'll see a full feature. Yeah, yeah. In snippets. I mean, if you, just if you broke it down by episodes, it'd be even greater. What? If you broke it down by episode, you know? So if they could go along the way with you, that would be interesting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, look, I mean, it's an exciting time. Um, I wouldn't beat your head over the, you know, the coals too much about the fact that you didn't do this in the past. It's, um, But... Uh, I, I do agree. I mean, I, th- I think, I think, I think people do enjoy watching, you know, as you, as you were saying before, Oh, you know, I'm going to be like the world's best actor one day, right? Your words. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm currently am as well, but I'm people, people don't know it. Right. You said that. Mm-hmm. That's what you said. Yeah. I second it. Okay, cool. I just wanted to clarify. Um, and then, and then, and then there's all this footage of the past that we were talking about things. I do feel that people do enjoy that more, as you were saying about reality TV. I do feel it's a weird. But is that is that postmodernism? Is that what that is? Mm. You know more about the art, like the fact that it's like art of the art, right? <laughs> it's like the making of the making. Maybe I don't know. Postmodernism and, is like other things. Anyway, so the, my my point my point is, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my my point is, I, I feel. Why is that? You think that people enjoy more than the movie these days? Like the truth behind the movie. Yeah, right. That's true. Some could say um, the documentary about the making of Apocalypse Now was better than the movie. No. Nah. <laughs> I, I mean, so when I say some, I say me. Like, I actually, I found it fascinating. The movie's great. It's a great documentary, Classic. but the movie's incredible. I love uh, documentaries. People are more spending more time on social media than they are watching movies now. That is for sure. People spend more hours of their day watching social media and watching yeah. their influencers or whoever they follow than they are watching movies. That's true. I would say that is a fact at this point. Um and that is interesting. People want to watch whoever do a dance challenge and talk about their feelings about, you know, the celebrity or the politician of the week or whatever it is, you know, um, that's what people want. People are into that now. People want to have that kind of connected thing. It's, I, you know, I, it's, I don't know. I, I don't even want to put judgment on it. Um, it's a thing. It's a strange new yeah. thing because the weird thing about it is it's not really storytelling. I mean, maybe it is, but it's not. It's not like – it's not storytelling the way we know storytelling. Like a book is storytelling. You know, a movie is storytelling. Storytelling this, and storytelling. This is – you know, when you're scrolling through TikTok, it's just – what the fuck is it? It's just like this information – Narcissism. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's narcissism when you're just watching other people. It's voyeur. No, no. I mean, like the content in and of itself, generally. I mean, a person. It is addicting, it. though, dude. It it is addicting. There's something very addicting about it. It is. I don't know. It's like gambling too, because you don't know what you're gonna get next. Like the small bite size 
way to watch things. Whereas you also do have the the new trend of long form podcasts as well. But the cool thing about long form podcasts is that, you know, a group of people, one person, two people can have a really in-depth conversation. And people like to have an in-depth conversation. People like to really get into the woods on a topic and hear a new perspective. And that's been sucked out of the world in many ways. You know, like when you look at any of the major news or media outlets, they don't do that. Back in the seventies, there were people that would do that. You know, like even, yeah. even up until recently, you had like the Charlie Roses of the world. I forget his name. Back in the seventies, there's this one talk show, dude. He had like the seventies hair. They'd smoke cigarettes and like, they'd have these long form conversations. They were longer than normal. You could really have a combo. Now it's like, good morning, America. Hey, it's Chris Hemsworth. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Tell us about your new movie. Chris is like, well, it's really great. I almost died. You almost died. Well, you know what I mean? Like, and now to this, right? And it's like, there's no, you know, like that was even in the news, they would have like a pundit on and it would just, you know, you couldn't really get into a combo. Like, hey, let's sit down and yeah. have a real conversation. And Joe Rogan, I think, well, I mean, he brought that back to us. He's like, no, we're going to have yeah. long conversations. And it also is really good because if you're driving or working in the kitchen or something, you want to put your headphone in, you don't want to touch, you don't want to have to swipe with your thumb, play a good long combo and just listen and do your stuff. You know what I mean? Like you're kind of engaged to something and you get to hear it. So it it it, it it's functional. Um so they are different. Yeah. Things. Well, how, how is that different than what Howard Stern was? Howard Stern is a great example of that. Howard Stern did that. Talk radio. Yeah. He Howard Stern was that. Radio. And Howard everyone Stern said once podcast started, they were like, like I used to be like, what's the difference between a podcast and talk radio, which is everywhere. Um, it's just the, the outlet, you know, it's on the internet instead of For radio. Sure. Radio. For sure. Right. For sure. It's like the same thing, except you until Sirius, I guess, and XM or whatever, um, you were limited to what you could say on and who and who had a and who had the opportunity to say it. Right. That was the limit. Exactly. How hard was it to get a show on radio? You know, like yeah. they were only picking. I mean, it wasn't like you could just upload to the radio. You had to get hired by the station. How many people right. were hired by the station? It was a few, and they were focusing on the things that they thought sold, which was mainly sex. Like Howard Stern was just a provocateur, ultimately. Yeah. He would have combos about other things, but it was all centered around sex. That yeah. was the thing. It was vulgar sex talk. And everyone was like, ooh, you know, they would listen to it. It was silly. He, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, was sex, it was, ultimately. It was people wanted to listen. You know, he'd have porn stars on or he'd ask celebrities about their sex life, you know. And he was, I mean, to the, at this point now, yeah, he'd be canceled if he was doing that in, the, in you know, today, what he was doing yeah. back in the day. Um, yep. I'm amazed he hasn't retroactively been canceled. Yeah, you can't cancel people with that big of a following, especially uh, since the people who true. Dave Chappelle has he been canceled? No, but other people with big followings have been canceled. Louis, well, they don't have his, they're not like really like I, I, what I meant by that is uh, Trump. Oh. These people have Trump, Louis, they have huge followings, they got canceled. Who got canceled? Louis. Yeah, you know, they, they're not, yeah, I get it. I get it, but I feel like Dave Chappelle and Howard Stern were on a much bigger level than Louie. I, I do. Anyway, we don't got to get into that, but there are certain people where it's like, yo, they got too much of a base. Like, they're not going to, you can't, you can't, you can't make them disappear. Um, also, it's what you do. Like, Dave Chappelle, compared to what Louis did, is like two right, different right, things. Right, right. Um, that being said, yeah, and podcasts, like yeah exactly and it gives people the ability to say whatever they want talk about refreshing things that no one can talk about anymore um i just also don't you know here's a question is it good that everyone has a voice or is it bad that everyone has a voice what i think really about social media is the, the good thing about social media is everyone everyone has a voice the bad thing is that everyone has a voice you know yeah, I think it's good ultimately. And they just, you know, you, you ultimately think it's a good thing. Yeah. You think it's brought positivity to our society over negativity? Uh, look, society, I, I have a theory. I, I think I have a thought. It's not a theory. It's my, I don't know what you call it. But look, there's there's good and bad in everything. Okay. 
society yeah. humans there is always anything new that occurs there is a good and a negative and things like they push us in directions you know and it's 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 also subjective it is what it is you know like it is that yeah, all right but let's look at filmmaking do you think do you think in terms of let's bring it back to our topic in terms of filmmaking has social media been a good thing or a bad thing in terms of movies for in terms of in terms of in terms of art in terms of movies and and yeah, movies really i mean television is still lasting strong but um yeah movies obviously it's been negative right we could say that yeah i mean it has but it's also and the reason why and the reason why they, it, 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 i think the, i think the reason why is because of what it's done to people's attention span right so i think it's, I, I'm only I'm talking about what it's done to us as humans and how it's lessened our ability uh, to to just stay focused for long periods of time. Yeah, but at the same time, like there's all these classic movies out there that I when I was young, I used to love watching. No one knew about them. No one was into them for whatever reason. I like that stuff. And now with social media and all the apps that are out there, you can discover these movies and watch them so easily whereas back in the day it was hard but are people i think people still are it's not, like sure that it, it's, it's good it's good not a i don't know how many people are watching all the old classics the criterion stuff i don't know i mean look it, it might very well be that social media is just absolutely unequivocally a negative for society that could be the case i mean there's a lot of negatives no question a lot. I think the negatives that way the positives. Yeah, they very well might. They very well might. I know that there's a lot of negatives. There's a lot of gripes I have with it for sure. Um, but it's just this new world, this new weird world that we exist in. Like it's here. Yeah. There's no getting I around thought, it. Yeah, we can't get around it. Should I? Should I edit treasure behind the scenes? That'd be amazing. No one's edited it. No, we should voice it though. We should just do it like content and just talk about it and then we could just do interviews okay here's what happened blah 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 blah. you remember this dude and back into footage and just you know, yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, okay yeah yeah that'd be fun oh my god that would be a trip yeah Should we tell everyone what treasure is i feel like they know it but that's only because we know it treasure of the black jaguar is a movie that mike and i made it was the first film that we really went out and made ourselves um and it's just, it's a cool movie it premiered at rain dance film festival it's got this really interesting vibe. This guy named Mike Bruce directed it, wrote it and directed it. Um, I wrote it and produced it. Um, and Mike and I starred in it. And it's a really, I think it's a really cool feat for two young, we were kids at the time, a movie that we went out and made, you know, in yeah. the desert. We made it in the desert. And because it was such a small budget, we camped. Like we didn't have hotels. The whole crew camped out in the desert. And we made yeah. this movie. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I also, I also think saying you wrote it is a stretch. That That's movie, true. it was barely a story. No, <laughs> it was all Look. improv. No, 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 no. That's not true. You don't there remember was a us all. You don't remember the fact that we're like, okay, there's, there's really like just making up improv, like making up scenes because there was like nothing going on. I don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. There was a, there was a full screenplay. We had a screenplay. We had all these scenes. He, you know, the scene. It was the very part. loose, man. I'm sorry. The scene Can where the tr you... dude. No, no, no. You're, 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 you're exaggerating. Are you kidding that. me? We improvised, but it was not. We had a full script, and we went. That beat movie was like. To, we had a very. We went beat for beat on that script. We had a shooting schedule. We shot it. We had all these scenes. We, we had we had loose outlines of like in this scene we have to be at this rock and like see something. It was like it was like loosely scripted. Nah, no, 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 no. I got. The, I had the script. I had the script, and you'd be surprised. Yeah. How close the movie is to that less the things that we go went in and post script. built out all right go find the script and then let's watch the movie and let's see if the words in our dialogue match up even remotely to 20 percent of what it was anyway um that 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 was that was you know and going back to what we we're saying about quentin and everything so that reminds me quentin's first movie well i don't know how long he wrote it took him to write um uh, Reservoir Dogs, but what Pulp Fiction was what ten years in progress, right? A movie. I don't know. 
Here's the script for Tragedy Girls. Tragedy for uh, Treasure of the Black Jaguar. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. You know, here's the opening piece yeah. where he talks about it. Um, it's an 88 page screenplay. Okay. Anthony fires a shot, killing the Russians. That's I, think the I think you're confused what I'm saying about saying that there wasn't work as, as if there wasn't words on a paper. I mean, like, existed. there was a lot of words. Like, here's a scene. I'm just saying, like, what Here's what a was scene, on and paper. this scene's in there. Holy great mother of God, we did it. We did what? it. We've been blessed by the gods of fortune. Woohoo! I'm going to move out of my mother's house. Like, scene, let's, dialogue. So, it wasn't loose the way watch. that you said it was. Oh, it was so loose. We said none of those words, mostly. Some some scenes, like some no, things. right here. Yeah. I say we should get 50%, 25 each. That's more than half of what we're... Remember this scene? This is... We, we say this dialogue. Yeah, yeah, there were some scenes. There were some scenes. Yes, absolutely. Now, do we improvise? Like, absolutely, we improvise. Like, we, we kept it we loose. It wasn't... Okay. Um, so it much. just... It, you're, you're giving the wrong conception. Like, this was an improvised movie. That's just not the case. It wasn't a, it wasn't a Larry David Curb Your Enthusiasm, no. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. At all. Okay. Um, I don't know what I was. I was. I was saying something, and then you pulled it up. Watch. Let's watch the movie, and then we can go back to the script and then see how much of it's in there. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's what I was saying. You know, our is the first couple of movies that we made, dude. They were, they were so like thrown together. You know, I mean, Quentin Tarantino. I, I heard was like ten years writing Pulp Fiction. From what I've heard, I don't know how true it is, um, but whoever, whatever it is, I'm sure he spent a I don't very. Think that's long... true. He, he didn't spend ten years writing Pulp Fiction. He wrote it after Reservoir Dogs. Okay. It's yeah. Like a year. I could be wrong about that. I just remember someone saying it was something he, he had it before Reservoir Dogs. He was writing it. And rewriting Paul Thomas it. Anderson had written um, Boogie Nights well before he made it. He'd had that script for a while. So what I'm saying is, you know, you have scripts that are like the stories it's like the foundation is there like it's a story because to me most of the times if it, it's not going to be a good movie if there's if there's no good story if, if on paper it's already fucked there's, there's like almost no shot you're gonna have a good movie yeah you have to have a good story have a good having something on paper that's brilliant does not guarantee a good movie but at the very least it has to be that so you have these movies that like were so planned i mean our the the the, the fate of why treasure wasn't as great as the reservoir dogs right um it was because of how fucking quickly everything was thrown together right the movies back then were done because of like opportunities that arose right and then uh you know a a, a time crunch to, to to make those opportunities uh, I, th happen. I think the issue is in the scripts well the issue is in the script because of the time that was allotted to writing the scripts yeah i mean i'm trying to remember how much time was put into writing treasure probably not enough um definitely not enough i'm trying and to remember that like the the thing is is i mean look what's it called shark proof is another story but treasure i feel like we did put some work into it i also think it was just learning you know like that was an era we had digital cameras and like accessibility. And so we were making movies, but we were very much so learning how to do it by doing, you know? Right. Um, and right. yeah, right. I think, I think, I think it's in the script, not in the production. The production of treasure is really good. It the looks good. I mean, we have tech camera, which is brand new. The, the, the post-production of treasure is really good. We had great, I mean, because we were literally on location, and like our locations were just stunning because we weren't faking it, right? Yeah. We had brilliant locations. Yeah. Uh, it was, it, you know, oh, it had the makings if, if, if it was on paper, if it was, you know, if it was there, we had the makings of making a pretty cool movie. And it still was cool in many ways, but all our first two or three movies, like, probably should have been in hindsight more like thesis projects, you know? <laughs> Things were like, we're young men learning. Right, we're inexperienced in many of these things, and uh, maybe this is not for people to to see, but to to best exemplify what we can do. But you know, like for instance, our second movie, no one has seen, and that would be an interesting thing, right? As you were saying, like to show this show. <laughs> a little a little time capsule of fun right there. Um, 
but like that one as well. I mean, that was literally like we were just fucking winging it as we were going. We were like, all right, we need another scene. Like, what should happen next? What should happen next in this movie? It so, 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 so we didn't do treasure like that, which is what you were saying. We didn't movie. do treasure like that. We did not no. do treasure like that. Miracle Man, we did. It was a mockumentary. Miracle Man. And we were yeah. really just like, what can we put in this? How can right. we advance these characters? And I actually think that it worked for that, for the Dude, most we part. We had a turnaround of three months between finishing Treasure and production of Miracle Man. Wow, was, it was it that a, quick? It was a three-month turnaround. Wow. I'm talking, we wrapped in, I remember, we. it, it was from Dude, September, do you, October, do you remember? November, December is when I came to film there. Do you remember when we were doing Miracle Man and Masa was leaving? It was his rap day. And we were like, oh, we got to throw a rap party for Masa. But we had to shoot the next day. We it wasn't a rap. So it was our rap party when we still had to film we still like had to three film. more days of work. But we wanted to have a celebration for Masa. Right. Right. So we threw this party and got way too drunk yeah. i mean like you were a mess i was a mess i mean i'm 22 i drank like a fucking 22 year old drink you were so drunk i'll never forget we were cleaning yeah. up and i was like you know i was drunk too and i was like okay we gotta clean up the house we gotta clean this up and i'm like mike let's start pouring out all the you know the alcohol from all this all, the all right co- i am blacked out belligerent and, drunk and, and i, I look hear camera go mike we gotta pour out all the alcohol right because all and the cups I, you know there's cups everywhere full of alcohol i'm like yo let's just empty this all into the sink <laughs> and, and i he goes and throw it all, all away the alcohol into the sink yeah that is all my blacked out right. drunk brain so i'm hurt. taking cups and i'm pouring them into the sink and then i look over and there's Mike with a giant, you know, those big fifth vodka bottles. Like, cause we bought all this alcohol for the party. It wasn't a fifth, bro. It was a, what do they call this? Gallon of Smirnoff. Gallon of, just a giant thing. Shunk. And he's just pouring it into the sink. And so I'm <laughs> taking alcohol and pouring it. Brand new. And I look at Mike and I go, oh good. He's working. He's And I go, and then I double take. And I'm like, Mike the fuck are you doing you're pouring out the alcohol into the sink and you're like i don't even remember what you said you just i think i was like you told me to pour the alcohol yeah you gave me this look like you were like what bro like i'm i'm pouring the alcohol into the sink it was and they were brand new bottles first of all you brand new you already did it to two full bottles like i already had like that was like my third bottle and I like was opening brand new bottles. The cap was crackling, oh, and I was like, thunk, 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 thunk. "You're just pouring out all the alcohol." I know, I know, it was so bad. I was um, so drunk that and next then, day that, on set. And then that was probably 4:30 a.m., and we had to be on on set, ready to go by like 7:30 like a.m. <laughs> Oh. And we're the leads, the producers, we're like the guys in charge. Everyone else is like looking to us for examples, and we are the most irresponsible. Like, I I mean, we walk on, I think there was vomit on the couch. I think I I think I threw up. Oh I think my. I threw up on the on, on Samir's couch. No. And then I think that's how bad it was. Did you really? I, I didn't know I'm about this. I'm shaking. Oh, and you did, because I think you just don't remember, because I remember you'd be like, I have to clean this couch cushions. I was like, it wasn't me, man. <laughs> you're like, oh, you're the only one who slipped God. on the couch. And I'm like, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I didn't throw oh, up. God. And we go on set, and I am so, like, just, I can't, I'm dying. Like that. that they had to do your makeup. makeup. Our makeup artist, you were Rose, sleeping, who was amazing. My makeup, like Two Face and Batman, where I basically was sleeping on the side on my face, 
and she had to she could only do the makeup on the side that wasn't that, that I wasn't laying on. And then she'd shake me and go, Michael, turn. And I would turn over and I'd lay on the other side. And while I was snoring, she'd be doing my makeup. And that, and then I go, I was a champ though. Did I not pull that day off? Yeah. I'm fucking professional. We all did. Like, dude, that was the thing. Back then, I could operate on no sleep and like have had alcohol. I don't think I was as drunk as you, but I, I still was drunk that night. And the next day I was beat. But like, I could rally back then. I remember, dude, now I could never do anything like that ever. I, guess, I would just I be like, guys, we're not filming today. This, <laughs> yeah, I would never, I wouldn't do that. But wow, back then, man. And I remember that, and not only that, but it was like fucking 90 degrees that day. We were wearing hoodies. So, I mean. And we did, it was an action like, scene. So we had to like. it was like, a high intense. High intense. Runny, high energy. Like, <laughs> yeah. ah, fucking scene. Yeah. Like, oh, I, that yeah, was brutal. I just had to dig deep. And that was so it was, brutal. And we got. We beat. Every, between every take, it was like. Every take, I'd collapse. got to do another one. Every take, I would fucking collapse. <laughs> but I, I dug deep, and I made it happen. And it was one of the best fucking scenes in the movie, probably because I was still drunk. And It's one of the best see, scenes in the movie. If you see the movie, you see how drunk I am, because I'm not acting. I'm literally in the scene and going, oh, I'm going to fucking throw up. Oh, I'm going to fucking throw up. And you see me. You see me, need, like, nauseous and needing to throw up in the scene. and it, and it, But it worked brilliantly. So, a yeah. little bit of behind the scenes story for, for that movie. That movie's a gem. That movie's a gem. We got to release it. We got to release it. Maybe on this All YouTube right. channel. I'm All up. right. I'm pulling up to my house for Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you. We'll talk Peace. later. Peace.